support will be elections of 2024 and then the one next must prepare itself is the reporter for political education. For now, we will call on the reporter of the Commission of Elections of 2024 and the reporter is uh, fighter Gail Sibia. Thank you. Um, let me take this opportunity to greet our ever beautiful DSG, CCT deployees, our provincial chairperson and our provincial secretary, all provincial command team members, and our RCT leaders and fighters. All of you are greeted. Um, I'm here to report on the commission of elections going towards 2024. The very first program that we should have and the very first program that we should actually take into consideration is the one million membership campaign, voter registration campaign, where we should actually start focusing on taking voters whom are in our provinces but are from different provinces and then they are residing in our respective provinces because of work. So we should always make sure that we take these people to IEC to go and register in order for them to be able to vote. Um, and where should this be done? It should be done in our different respective words. And the manner in which it would be done, we would be the ones from our wards, the branch, making sure that we take them to the IEC on a weekly basis and make sure that they are registered. People responsible for this are the BCT. Uh, the second one is the ID campaign for all the people who have reached 16 years and above. Uh, taking them to home affairs and making sure that we have an IEC campaign to make sure that our first time voters are registered to vote when 2024 comes and making sure that all MPLC deployees of the that are in our organization are giving us the relevant information. Um, this should be done in our respective words through the program of Red Fridays and community campaigns like outreach programs and making sure that we inform them of the IEC campaign. On a weekly basis, who should do this? The BCT, each and every BCT in each ward. Uh, the third option is the registration of new voters at institutions of higher learning. Um, this should be done in all words in regions and provinces by visiting colleges, universities, and also targeting first-time voters whom are students but never registered. The program should be done every Friday and specifically on weekends. We should do this, the BCT, RCT, and PCT. The fourth program would be high school campaign in all words. As fighters, we should be going visiting, to school, visiting schools to target first-time voters and making sure that we assist them to make IDs. It should be our responsibility in every ward to make sure that we find these young people who do not have identity documents and we make sure that we take them to the home affairs on a monthly basis. The people responsible for this is the BCT, RCT and PCT. The fifth option is the establishment of the PETF, RETF, SRETF, and BETF, including the VDETF. In our different wards, 
regions and province through structures, having meetings and informing our structures about the responsibilities of the VDETFs, RETFs, SRETFs and BETFs. And when should this be done? It should be done as guided by the CCT. The people responsible for this will be the BCT, RCT and PCT. Um, our sixth option would be the establishment of street or block coordinators. And this should be done in our respective wards. Wards must have sheet streets in order to know how many households in particular are in the streets and the needs of those particular homes in order for us to be able to give service delivery to the different homes in need of our assistance going towards the elections of 2024. When should this be done? It should be done immediately and it should be an ongoing program. The people responsible for this should be the PCT. Uh, the seventh option, party agent training or induction. This should be done in our respective wards. How should this be done? The ward-based party agent training for all VDs in wards. It should be done quarterly in order for our fighters to be able to be ready when 2024 elections come. And this responsibility is the responsibility of the BCT. Uh, the most important one is voter education. It's very crucial to have voter education in all branches in order for us to inform our voters about the importance of voting why should a, a citizen vote because of service delivery because of the future of our kids we need to inform them about our local municipalities and whatever is happening in and around our communities that is the reason why they should vote and this should be done through door to door and mass uh, community meetings it should be done quarterly and the responsible people for this are the pct The eighth option is the installation of IEC app on our gadgets as fighters. It is very important for the purpose of registration and checking of registration status of our voters in all wards. And it should be done by all volunteers to make sure that our IEC apps are up and running. It should be done immediately and the parties responsible for this are the BCTs, RCT, and PCT. Uh, in order for us to prepare an elections report as to, as to what and where our shortcomings come from previous elections per ward. Uh, in order for this to happen, preparation towards going to election should be done by the RCT. The instruction should be given by RCT, PCT, going towards end of October 2022. Um, and public representatives must have a tag of, of 10 online voter registration weekly, on a weekly basis. In all wards, it must be done online. It must be an ongoing program. This is the responsibility of the PCT, RCT, and PCT. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, fighters and please make sure that you, you, you note where you want to clarify or you also you note or also note your input that you will be doing later after we have done all the commission. We are going to do all the reports and after all the reports, it is only then that we will start to, to get your inputs and where you see clarities in terms of the reports. And uh, with that said, the next... Uh, reporting commission is political education. Karisho? Karisho uh, wants to work from far. You should have just come closer. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, program director. First of all, let me take this opportunity to cast my greetings or my salutation
to our national leadership who are here with us in this uh, progressive PPA and pass my salutations to the leadership of this, the new elected leadership of this province and the house at large. May you please be saluted. Commissars and fighters, uh, I'm delegated to give a report, to give a report from the Commission of Political Education. So in that uh, commission, the commission uh, sent me here today to report that the first thing that this leader, the, the provincial leadership should do is to construct a program of action of which will include a political induction. That political induction um, will be done by the, 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 respons the people who are responsible to do that is the BC, uh, BCTs, RCT, PCT, where so these programs will be on what's regions and the province itself. Uh, point number two there is the establishment. They said that we discussed that there should be an establishment of political committees. This political committees is duty will to organize and monitor all political programs where these political programs will take place in what regions and province. So it will, it will be an immediate program of which it will, be, it will also be a responsibility of the RCT to do it and the PCT. Then the commission also discussed that there should be a political seminars. So this political seminars, uh, its mandate is to advance the ideas of the organization on what is there that we stand for as the EFF and what is there that we seek to achieve as the organization. So this program must happen quarterly and who is there is the responsibility of the PCT to do that. Then the commission also, all, also concluded that we should come up with a book club. This book club is duty, it will to, is duty will to break the ideological di uh, diagonals into simple terms to accommodate members of, I mean, to accommodate our members so then they can understand this uh, ideological diagonals. So it will be a program that is going to happen quarterly. This program, it will be the responsibility of the BCT, RCT, and PCT. The commission, the commission also resoluted that there ought to be a membership uh, membership recruitment this membership recruitment within the membership we know that there is a oath of uh, there is a oath before before you fill in the membership there is an oath that oath alone it contentizes you as a fighter what is that that is what is that that we stand for as the EFF so that um, oath must be must be distributed in a form of pamphlets so it should be an on, it, sh it should be an ongoing program. That program will be will be that it will be the responsibility of the BCT. So the commission also resolved that there ought to be a political outreach. So this political outreach, its responsibility is to make an awareness about the gender uh, about the gender-based violence and feminism. This pro uh, program it will be a quarterly program and it will be the responsibility of the PCT. So this program, it will take place on what regions as the, and the province and the province. Uh, commissars and fighters, that's the report which was made from the Commission of Political Education. I salute you, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, young fighter. Uh, we always appreciate to see young men coming forth, taking responsibility to build the organization. Uh, the next commission that will be coming forth uh, is communications. I think it was led by our spokesperson, Fighter Lichuti, and the reporter there is uh, Mofadi. Uh, 
Once we call your commission and you know you are a reporter, just come closer already. Eh? I, I, I like the walking, but let's, let's be snappy. Thank you. All right. All right, no, we are not going to wait. We will then swap. We will do finance and then uh, we will come back to communications. Uh, and uh, Fighter Natani is the reporter. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, my name is Fighter Puelo Natani. I'm here to, before I give the commission resolutions, I'm really going to greet all the, the leaders in the house. Uh, DSG, you are greeted, uh, commissars, um, all the PCT members, RCT members, uh, delegates, you are also greeted. Thank you. Uh, from the commission, from the finance, this is what we came forward with. As we know that um, we are on zero budget right now, so we, we ought to thought that the, the nearest solution that we'll have for now, it will be the Galati. Now we know we have been preaching about that, but it's going to happen this time. We are going to make sure that it's going to happen. Uh, our gala dinner is going to take place this next month, which is November, on the 1st of November. And we will be selling the tickets, ne? because we, we're not supposed to ask anything from our leaders above. So we'll be selling tickets to, to the public. The ticket will be 500 rand ne? for normal. This is a gala dinner. It's, it's not a party. So we are going to sell ticket, 1,000 rand is VIP, then normal ticket is going to be 500 rand. And I'm going to put it in this kind of fashion. We, we must support this one because we are doing it for our province. It's not about us wanting to prove ourselves. Then whatever that is going to take place on that day, will be communicated uh, during the time. But for now, we must know that uh, we are really going to need your support for now. And then uh, we will be extending our invite to our, to our only uh, artist, U Baba Ringo Madlingos, and we'll be also having our local uh, artist from that region, which is we are going to start in Francis Part. Then other regions, they will let us know and we will also support them. Yeah, the second one, it's selling merchandise. Uh, after we are having this gala dinner, the profit that we'll be making, we are going to buy at least one or two tents for now. If we are going to buy one or two tents, the other tent will, will buy the other one and we are going to, to hire them out. We are not going to put the emblem of EFF on it because some people are not EFF members. So whenever someone needs a tent amongst us in the public uh, um, the community, we'll be hiring tents and we will also start with buying chairs, maybe 50, and the 50 will buy the other 50 up until we reach whatever we want to reach. And we are also planning in the same, in the same uh, structure that is uh, selling merchandise, we are also uh, planning to have our own water depot. Then we'll be, we'll be getting the support right here from the organization. Then it's not a must that they must go out, organization must go out and go and buy water like this one. 
how much did we spend to buy just what I think maybe it's it's more than ten thousand rand, which could have come back to the to to the province. Uh, the third one we are having a car wash. This one I love it so much because we already have the money in the pocket, and thanks to our provincial treasurer for donating thousand rand to all regions. Uh, the the provincial treasurer, our newly elected. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I think the finance and its finance and fundraising um, commission they didn't get the proper brief. What we want from this commission is for them to give us sustainable project and programs that are going to fund their organization, our movement in the Northern Cape. If possible, also be able to find the whole entire organization. What we are having right now here, it's a to-do list. It's what they want to do. So when we talk about fundraising and, and, and financing the organization, as fights are seated here, I strongly believe that we are all very creative and we are brilliant and intelligent. So what we, ca we, we talk about, it should be issues that in each region in the Northern Cape, what you'll be doing is that in France's part, we will find fighters, community members, and we can open a bakery. That is sustainable. It's something that is going to empower each one of us, and it's something that it's needed on a daily basis. We open a baker. I'm giving you examples in Sol Blaki, as a region, as the EFF, where we will be selling bread, cakes, scones. We deliver everybody in weddings. We can even deliver in supermarkets. Number two, you go to JTG. In JTG, for example, you find that there are fighters and women who do tailoring, you know, where they can be able to start a project, where they will do something about a, in, in textile, where they can design. We have our mothers in, in, in our communities, whereby at, at this moment they can do a little thing, those toilet sets, they can do those things. So we start that as an EFF, we have a shop where we'll be able to sell those things on our own. Then we go to Namakwa and we look that in that area, what can be done? You find that you can have an agricultural site where we'll be start a, a, a doing such project. I'm just giving an example, fighters, that fundraising and financing the organization will need each and every one of us to be committed to it so that we will be able to empower each other and because we know that the high unemployment rate that is here and it's happening, we must be able to come up victory and come up very strong. So for that, the finance committee must go back in their commission, go sit down, give us something tangible, something that we can do for now and we leave a legacy for our children. Thank you. So you can... Uh, thank you very much, uh, DSG. Uh, we always appreciate you guiding. Um, the next commission uh, is Commission of uh, Com Communication. Yes, Mufadi, Fighter Mufadi. Mm, thank you very much, uh, Chair of the Session. Uh, greetings to all the CCT deployee and the provincial command team and all the fighters gathered here today. Mine is to report back on media and communication. Our, com our commission has resolved on the following to strengthen media and communication in the Northern Cape province. The resolution is, is the establishment of communication structures in the PCT and all regions. They must identify communication coordinators in regions and sub-regions. And this must be done immediately after the first PCT meeting from the PPA. 
People that shall be held responsible shall be the PCT and RCT members. The opening of social media accounts by all the members and RCT, the BCTs. All members of the EFF must have active social media accounts in all the EFF structures. And this shall be an ongoing thing by, the, by all the members of the EFF. They must outdoor media and branding in the province, regions, and wards using available billboards or walls. And this must be implemented 2023 April. It must be done by the PCT members. Identification and association and recruitment of society influencers in our province, regions, and wards. We must speak to them, invite them to EFF programs, and use them as faces of campaigns. And this must be done immediately by the PCT and RCT members. The compos composition of EFF songs and poems in the province, regions, and words. We must identify artists, make use of talent in the EFF, and this must be done on 2023 March by the PCT, the RCT, and the, all the BCT members. Creation of EFF podcast in the province. We must interview the EFF leadership, community activists, and all the political experts. And this shall be done on January 2023 by the PCT members. Purchasing of EFF sound system and communication devices in the province of Northern Cape. Fundraised by the province by January 2023, which shall be done by the CCT, the PCT, and RCT members. Creation of media and communication and technical teams in our province. And taking, taking members of communication structures immediately after the first PCT meeting. The people that should be held accountable should be the PCT and RCT members. Media statement and provincial newsletter in our province. Report all EFF programs, and they shall be done immediately by the PCT and RCT members. Uh, the motion to introduce sign language curriculum in our province. This is to encourage the Department of Education to introduce sign language in the foundation phase. And they shall be done in the next legislature sitting by the MPLs. The audio books uh, in, a, in the national and province must, and converting EFF constitution policy, policies to audio books, national plenum in January 22, and must be done by the CCT and PCT members. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, all those who were participating in that committee of finance, ne? just just silently without making, you know, or causing pandemonium, just, just go out there. You'll meet outside so that you can all revisit that commission and properly uh, deal with it. The next commission will be um, organizing and mobilizing or mobilizing and organizing and uh, the the reporter will be Vitalisiho. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, revolutionary greetings to our Deputy Secretary General, Commissar Popira Isibe Mailula. Uh, greetings to our Provincial Chair, our Provincial Secretary, PCT members, RCT, Branch de Delegate, uh, I'm going to report on the Organizing and Mobilize Mobilization Commission. As the Organizing and Mobilization Commission is that we must intensify the Red Fridays, especially in areas where we have recruitment lack. This will be done by the BCTs and it must be done on public spaces every Friday and the responsible people will be the PCT, RCT, and BCTs. And also it, it, must, it says that we must have full-time branch secretaries so that we can keep track of our administration up to date in branches. And that thing, it, it, it must be done by the branches. And branches, their, their responsibility is to elect the committed and dedicated branch secretaries. 
and it must be implemented as soon as possible by the PCT. Uh, all elected leadership and employees deployed in respective sub-regions must honor their deployment and set example in relation to membership recruitment. And this is the responsibility of branches, regions, and province. And it must be implemented immediately by the PCT, RCT, and BCT. Recruitment must be done on a daily basis in order for us to educate the public on what the EFF stands for and seeks to achieve. The responsibilities for branches, regions, and province that the recruitment must be done on a daily basis. The responsibilities for PCT, RCT, and BCT. As the EFF, we must visit secondary schools and target the learners who are not registered to register them for voting. And this is the responsibility of branches, regions, and province. And it must be done every Wednesday by the PCT, RCT, and BCT. We must have a provincial mobilizing team established in regions to assist the province in the regions that are struggling. And this thing must be done by the province by October 2022 and the responsibilities for the PCT. We must establish a desk in our province and regional offices to target unregistered voters. And this it must be done by the province. It must get volunteers to monitor the progress of unregistered voters to register. It must be done by November and the responsible person is for the responsible people is for PCT. Fighters must motivate new members to pay for their own membership when joining the EFF to demonstrate education and commitment. And this must be done by branches, regions, and province. We must do it daily, PCT, RCT, and BCT. Recruitment must be done publicly in line with the EFF national plenary mandate. It must be done by branches, regions, and province. We must do it on public spaces. It must be done by PCT, RCT, and BCT. Fighters must make a point that recruitment of membership Membership first starts at, at originates in their homes amongst their immediate relatives. Start recruiting immediate family members before start going outside, which must be done by branches, regions, and province. Fighters must make it a point they download the IEC app on their phones to check if one of one is registered to vote before recruiting the person. Verification of IEC registration must be done on the spot of recruitment. It must be done by branches, regions, and province and it must be done on a daily basis by PCT, RCT, and BCT. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, swift. Can we get uh, the next commission, which is governance? And it will be done by the chairperson of ZF Mkau, Dirk Yeso, fighter Dirk Yeso. Thank you very much, Chairperson of the session. Uh, CCT members, PCT members, newly elected uh, branch delegates. I present the, uh, the Governance Commission, GTU. Uh, healthcare services generally is a challenge with regard to uh, uh, our people. The Department of Health is failing our people. And below are some of the issues th that we discussed. Clinics that uh, operates from 7 to 4, but from 12 o'clock they are not accepting patients and lunch break patients are not being assisted. Patients daily visits at Kimberley Hospital for medical assistance. Most of the time, ambulance trans transporting patients is unable to carry all the patients. To be on the time and to get uh, a space on, on the transportation patients and the el elderly has to wake up in the night around 3 a.m. The clinics remain closed whenever there is no water. Ambulances remains a challenge in the province. Every, pa every patient accessing medical services at a private hospital must pay 1,500 even when they are having medical aid. This is where there is no public hospitals. Clinics does not have uh, 
water and medication. As such, there is no services that our patients that our patients receive. Health services is a problem in in the Northern Cape, and department has basically collapsed. Clinics are not functional, and there is nothing being done. We need to put pressure on the government and especially on the MEC of health in the province on a daily basis so that we can access healthcare services. This is a common challenge and a problem uh, uh, to, to, to the people of the Northern Cape. The recommendations for, for these challenges raised by the commission is that in each and every municipality that have public reps, these public reps should write letters to the department heads and the health of the, and the heads of the facilities uh, uh, especially the HODs of districts and managers before the end of October 2022 and send feedback to the newly elected GTU uh, head to deal with the MEC of uh, health in legislature through the, and through their offices to account to the people. The timeline for this is 30 days from today that uh, public reps must send those letters of the challenges that they are facing within their mis uh, different municipalities. And for those municipalities that, that doesn't have public reps, the GTU head of that region must ensure that that uh, municipality is being represented and that letters must be, must be sent through to, to the responsible people. Uh, the next issue is the dilapidation of the infrastructure. Ma majority of the municipalities in the Northern Cape experience a problem with clean running water, and the roads have been constructed, yet, remain, yet it remains unfinished. Dilapidation of infra infrastructure causing spillages of water and sewage overflowing in the streets. This is a daily occurrence within the Northern Cape experience, water and sewage problem due to the old infrastructure. The housing challenges that our people are facing is not getting any better, and the time timeline for waiting for houses is also a great challenge. Service delivery in especially a region like JTG, where we are now currently, is a problem. The infrastructure remains a challenge because of the pet toilet system that are being used, and uh, there is also a serious water challenge and a water short sh shortage. Roads, especially entrances, are not very conducive to uh, assist uh, with any service delivery. Municipalities requires correct dumping sites, which is not very close, which is uh, very not very close to the proximity of residential areas, resi residential areas where our people are staying. The response, the, res the recommendations, and the responsibility uh, is for is for MPLs that we have within the Northern Cape of uh, the EFF, the GTU head must ensure that a plan is laid, is, is outlined, uh, and a committee must be established which is specifically focusing on the infrastructure. The construction company which uh, Zamaniso recently launched should be uh, disbanded and, and should not be entertained by the EFF and uh, the priority should be that there must be a infrastructure committee which is recommended by by the the EFF thank you very much uh, thank you very much um, because finance is still busy uh, you know restructuring their report can we go straight to engaging and making inputs on all the other uh, commissions that already reported. And then when they come back, we will just deal with their co committee and engage it and finish the commissions. Uh, I believe it's time to raise your hand if you have an input. When you raise your hand, I'll recognize you, and then you say who you are, and then you tell us which commission are you engaging or are you making an input to. So, as said, like that, please, let's do so. Any hand? Uh, I see there is a hand here. Uh,
Thank you. Shoot. No, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Chair of the Session. I am Kumutse Homokale, Francis Barth, <coughs> Pogwane Sabrijin, Wat One. I would like to make an input on the Governance uh, Commission uh, Chair. Specifically for the area I came from, which is which is Pogwan. Pogwani is consisting of three areas, which is your Pampirstad, your Haswater, Jan Kemp, and Hanspan. But in terms of the water supply in the area, Hanspan Jan Kemp and Haswater is supplied by the municipality. <clears throat> Pampistat, it's Sidibeng. Now, the challenge that is there is the municipality is buying bulk water from the water authority, which is your, your valve. Which Sidibeng is getting that water from that bulk of the municipality. Sidibeng is supposed to, to, to clean the water and supply it to the community. The infrastructure which the Sidibeng is operating from is the infrastructure of the municipality. Now, Sidibeng it's supplying water to Pampirstad, the areas of Northwest, which is Itireling, Majakoro, Yossi King, and so forth. Without the service level agreement between both municipalities, which is your Pogwani municipality and Greater Tau municipality from the Northwest, and your Francis Bard District Municipality and the Dr. Ruth District Municipality from Northwest. Now, on a monthly basis, CD Bank is taxing Pogwani Municipality. Bear in mind, Pogwani is buying the bulk water from Fall Hearts. But the very same water, Pogwani cannot account for, for the losses of the water that we are using to northwest areas, which there is no service level agreement between those two municipalities. And now the other point that we are facing in that area, the reservoir which is, was built by Pogwani municipality is not within the jurisdiction of Pogwani municipality is in the northwest. Now, in terms of the asset records of the municipality, that infrastructure, you cannot say is our infrastructure because it at another man's land. So, uh, my input was to say uh, the leadership, uh, our public reps from the, the, our MPLs, uh, councillors, district councillors, they must look into that because I think it's a way of ANC looting from that municipality because Pokwane is supposed to pay CDB for the services that CDB does not give to our people. I thank you, Shay. No, thank you very much. Um, so the commission, uh, I hope you, it has absorbed that point and will just you know... Uh, uh, note it. Uh, any more? Is there anyone? Uh, I see there is a hand there. I, th uh, uh, I think it's the treasurer of Pixley. And then uh, I see there the former PCT member advocate Moshe. You'll be number two. And then I see fighter from Carnarvon. Uh, it's just that I forgot his name. Yes. You'll be number three. And then fighter from uh, JTG will be the Fourth hand. Thank you. In that sequence. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Uh, 
mbonge kambe ezara of pixel kaseme che i think i, I need uh, to give a contribution to the political education commission uh, i think uh, this ppa needs to give a mandate to the newly elected uh, pct out of all the programs that will, they will have i think the, the one of political education must be the priority my reason chairperson is that uh, the reason for this observing this ppa currently what happened yesterday it clears it clearly shows the level of political understanding especially to us who calls ourselves leaders um there uh, i think uh, chaperson what happened yesterday is that there's nothing wrong that had happened to this pba ne? contesting a conference it, it it shows that we understand that we have to exercise our democratic rights in terms of our constitution as the party but when you didn't emerge and you left the ppa because you didn't emerge it clearly shows that your level of understanding in politics is very small so to this newly elected uh, pct i want to give you a mandate we need to have a program that will start from the branch level to regions and to province so that we can freshen up and strengthen our level of understanding thank you chairperson thank you very much uh, for the input the the describers ne, of those different commissions ne? you you must continue making those notes or inputs that are made by the house please don't lose focus advocate fight advocate thank you chair greetings to the leadership my name is alfred charo moshe uh, popularly, popularly known as atm i'm from what eight joe morolong jtg mine is on uh, the commission on political education and uh, i want to support the view expressed by the speaker who just uh, spoke now the importance of political education the importance of inducting our leaders not only the pct but all the leaders I was embarrassed yesterday when the regional chair said, made this statement that, or was asking a question, that why didn't the PCT co-opt one or two or, or one person in the space of one uh, 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 leader in the official, the treasurer? This was from the regional chair of a region uh, the regional chair of francis bar but he's a leader but he comes here he doesn't understand that you cannot co-opt in the top five so it shows lack of understanding uh, the constitution of the eff the policies and all those constituting documents so I, i'm emphasizing that that point chair thank you Thank, thank you very much, uh, Fighter Alfred. Um, the, the, the third, yes, the, the comrade from uh, Carnarvon. Comrade from Carnarvon. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, let me give my greetings to all protocol observers. I am from Ward 1. Uh, in Pixlika, I make a career sub region. My name is Ricardo. Uh, I have two questions one on, uh, uh, two suggestions, one on uh, governance and the other on political order uh, education. 
the one on governance is uh, the one of the the provincial construction uh, 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 company that uh, uh, Germany saw launch uh, uh, during this year. Uh, my plea to to my leaders at the provincial level and all levels in the EFF, we must condemn that that kind of thing was launched by by the ANC. But because for me that is a, that is totally. Uh, the looting of public money. Zamani Sol is not the, the person that he shows to be. He's a thief and he's, he's busy uh, building the ANC with public money. So we as the EFF in total, we must condemn that thing. Uh, the other one on political edu education is uh, for us to growing the EFF and strengthen it we must uh, give the fighters uh, a very good uh, political education that they must understand how the EFF works. The EFF is not a puppet organization. It's an organization who is led by our leaders that we believe in. So we must give that the political education that, that we can strengthen the, the movement for the future of our citizens and our brothers and sisters of Africa. Mantra. Wait, uh, no, no, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Ricardo. And then the uh, fighter here from uh, JTG. Uh, <coughs> election Kone ka 2024 re tla khona mara re tla khona ha ha ile gore e PCT member RCT le BCT re go ga mmogo go le gantse se ke se ke le mogileng go ke diploetsing teng oro go ke berekang gone go go godisa mokhaga ka one membership rule one le ka recruitment go le gantse o kraya RCT e tsa ka rolo mara BCT e sa tse karolo ene e be nna gore ga RCT tsa karolo bc sa tse bct on e sa tse karolo go godisa mokhari re deploy re mo 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 di branch tse di ntse hang ka ka rolo go branch nye kwa ele ga po bo tswa go ya kwa so se ke ne ke se kopa ya la mba e tla pele ba rona ke gore ba leke go bua di bct member tsa rona hang ka ka ba ra itse rotle go tshwantse gore RCT ga e bua go eretse ke shone na se ke batlang go se bua gore a ba eta pele ba rona ba buye le di BCT member tsa rona di khone go tsenya meeting ka nako di khone go dira tiro ka nako ya mokhaga e sing jalo ha BCT sa reetse RCT or RCT sa reetse PCT ga gona se pese se tla berekega ke a le bora thank you very much uh, i hope the scribe has absorbed uh, that of the election 2024 commission. Uh, another round of hands. Um, Fighter Tivani, uh, RS of Pixley, and um, former student command, the leader. And is there another, that's, that's the only three hands. Is there any other person? All right. And then you are number four leadership that side. Thank you very much in that order. Thank you, Mdula Spilo. Ke le ke tapile e mo pele ha ha go ba ile bo gisa sethwe ha lala. Branch delegate ya itumeng. Eh. Ha ke tse ke le hala ke tsitsinyo ya ka kwa governance. Ko jan kempe Mdula Spilo. Mabitla a rona a ko a mo northwest. Ko Christiana ko majar majadi tau. Re itla batho ba rona ko northwest. 
ene re na le bothata ba gore mabitla a atlala so re kopa gore lo re thuseng re khodeng go nna le mabitla ka go rona khae ka gore ya nong ha atlala ga go simologa ya ka ikete ena bothata ka gore di informal settlement ya christiana e tla mo saiting ya mo mabitla a leng teng ga re tsura go tlhola re hitla batho ba bang kae ya ka ya bobedi ndula stulo batho ba koma jeng ba ba wela mo ot 5 ke ba koma gareng batho ba koma jeng ga ba ga ba khone go itirela se ba batlang go se itirela koma jeng ka gore le hasela koma jeng le gompiono ba le tlei maela mara se le bitsi bone so ke kopa gore ka gore ya le ja bona gore mo ba ita le dimpele ba rona ba bantsha ba ba re ba re ba tlhopileng mabane ke bona dina o tsa bonele di go tomane di tekanetse ke batla lo go lwela batho ba koma jeng potritere o dutsi ko warantene ko toropong o laola batho ba majeng ela ka tshela dintsi dung so ke kopa gore e stop ya ga potritere batho ba le ke batho ba rona ba bangwe ba bone ba tswa ko majeng ele ba bangwe ba bone ba hitletse ba bo ra bone le ba uma ma bone o uma ba utata ba bone ko majeng ma bitla a batho ba ko majeng a mangwe a mangwe go na le makgwa a ba senyang ba ba romang batho gore ba e gwepa ko go na le ditaimane so ke kopa gore ka tjwetjwe ke kopa le thuseng batho ba ko majeng le bile thusa le batho ba ko jan kempe ka mabitla ko khang spanner ka ke a le bo Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, the scriber of governance is absorbing uh, as these points are very important that have been raised. Uh, number two, R.S. Pixley. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Leonard uh, William McKenna uh, from Pixley Kaseme and the Lisle Ward 4. Yes, uh, mine is just uh, a small input uh, in relation to the commission who presented on governance. Uh, I think that the regional chair who's sitting here next to me was also part of that commission, and it was led by the current provincial uh, chairperson, uh, Commissioner Tlaole. Uh, yes, uh, while I was sitting here and listening to 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 some of the resolutions taken by by the commission i was sitting here and uh, trying to find something which speaks to to coalition governance because we know that uh, starting from november last year up until now that we are, we are sitting with a serious situation in south africa whereby we are moving to a governance system which is very much populated by coalitions and the last elections it has resulted into a situation whereby south africa is faced with almost 600 councils and i think in the northern cape the eff is lucky to lead one of the dang councils which is tembelisle whereby i am the mayor also of that municipality and it becomes very difficult especially for the fact that that these coalition governments as they move while the years move forward We know for a fact that, that they are not institutionalized and that there are not a uh, legisla uh, proper legislative framework in place in order to ensure that proper service delivery took place in the municipalities. So what often happens in these municipalities is that these political parties just relies on these vague agreements or just, just verbal agreements, and that is not good for, for service delivery. So... While I was sitting here and I was hoping to hear something in terms of, of coalitions, uh, what is the EFF way on how we can practically, practically maybe come up with strategies and tactics or solutions in taking these this, this, this coalition governments, go governments forward? Because really what is happening in this municipality is that uh, the people on the ground are suffering. And uh, politicians in this coalition municipalities that are taking home a lot of money. Uh, so really I was sitting here and I was hoping, I thought that the chair was going to sponsor that idea in, 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 in that commission, but really I, I received nothing. So from here I'm going home, uh, 
I must continue to go and fight on my own because. <laughs> but thank you very much, Deputy Chair. No, no, thank you very much. I think you have raised a quite vital point. And I think the Commission of Governance must uh, uh, instruct the GTU to brainstorm around tactics and traits on how to manage coalitions. I think it should be captured like that. The GTU as the, the, the uh, committee that deals with governance issues must, so that's what should be absorbed by the scriber of governance. Please, the, the GTU is tasked. And then we are going to the third, is it the fourth hand? Yes. Uh, thank you, Fighter. Um, um, greetings to you all fighters. Gena Vaita Amukela Hobusi Hujo Mohas Hwanyana Chontal Hazi Bo Word Four. Um Che Nagi Wopa Hu era era mo commission. I think mine goes both mo commission in ya elections twenty twenty four and lia political education. I think uh, from the previous leadership, we actually, I don't know if we don't have the student command or what, because it only exists with Kimbali, with University. According to the political report, Eric really, yeah, the previous leadership. So I think as the newly elected leadership, it's very important for Bonnie Hori. Uh, to re nayang le structure thing. Mo kuruma ni, pana ba kuruma ni ba chende la ko office nsa e yensi ko. So obviously, mokas toki ko na le the way badran dilo sabo ni kati ang horses ko always idule ili ko kuti. Ene ko katutli ra traya ko launcha I think, but then repale it because of the leadership over there. So. As the provincial leadership, please make sure for everybody the political educations, the one good college, at least delegate them, but or deploying the leaders from even the students from Solplash University because the, stu the students are going to understand the politics, more especially the, the students. So please, are making sure for the launch of the, the student commands, good college in the launch. So that the Honor of Berkel could election in 2024. Thank you very much, Dida. Thank you very much. Um, I think uh, mobilizing and organizing must absorb that point. The Commission of Mobilizing and Organizing must absorb that point. Uh, thank you. The fourth, yes, fighter. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and greetings to the leadership, fighters, all protocol observed. The name is Mbulelo Muleko Fani Tansabani, what six? Mine would be just on beyond also political education and elections. Uh, leadership. Let's talk, let me start by elections. Fighters. 2024 is around the corner. Uh, observations are we are suffering because of it's like why I'm, I, I wanted to emphasize the point of political education. We, we have these documents, fighters. Let's take them serious. Let's go and read. Let's go and read these documents so that when you, we do door to doors, you want, you want, we go to a house, you want to convince someone to vote for the EFF, but you don't even know how are you going to start. Why, who is the EFF? What EFF stands for? You can't even convince a person. You are just doing it for the sake of trying to impress maybe the brand city theory or the leadership that is, is there. That's where we are failing. Let us all know what EFF stands for. When we go to the houses, let's not just go there, just to push time. Let's go there, know what are you going to say to convince, so that when you get out of that house, that person definitely knows the difference between the, the EFF and all these other political parties. The mistake that we are making, we are just doing things for fashion. We are not taking Red Friday seriously as fighters. We just want to wait to see who's coming, who's going to buy us booze, 
who's going to this, who's going to do that. You forget that you join voluntarily to build the organization. But uh, let's go and do self-introspection. You got a role to play to build this organization. On a very serious note, we'll never win this thing. If you am going to look for my regional chair, Fighter Diga, always we must be the one leading. Let's start leading ourselves, fighters. So that is why I'm saying political education, let's go familiarize ourselves with this thing so that when we go to that old lady who's been voting ANC because of Nelson Mandela, we are able to convince her, tell her the realities, the challenges, and everything that we are facing. But we can't. We are in a rush. We just go into that house, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up. Then you go out. There's nothing that you... That's what happens. But if you want to change, if you want this leadership to, to, to succeed, let's go and change our mentalities. Let's go and do things differently. Now, this youth, let's have that energy, like our president. Fighters is upon us. Please let us not disappoint. We can talk the whole day about these commissions, but the reality and the fact of the matter, you joined, and why you joined, and what is your purpose in the organization. Let's all play our roles. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, fighter. Uh, comrades, I'm going to take another round of hands. Uh, another round of events. Don't, don't sit on those ideas. Uh, we need them uh, to be able to oil the machine uh, towards 2024. So I'll take, uh, there is a hand here. You are number one. And then uh, you are number two, the fighter, former student command. And uh, the fighter with the white here, number three. And then the fighter at the front corner there. Thank you, fight. You are number four. In that order. Uh, thank you, Chair. Ki Jumidis Tiba to Botley. Kali Ina Kena Bonang Pegi Munabe Mojitiji Hotoko Jomorolong, Court for a Kikopa for Bua Mo Commissioning Aya Election. Adi Election. Renale pleke a bidi wan tualu au chwaka hota zelo oya black rock of ya fansein ba achi ba kuchwa ba kuchwalo ba choka intervention ya provincial ba achi ba le ba mo ba chweiri ba mo kuchwaro kore kibu ya lo tika le ba kala kore ha o ilimu siling e yang fansein ten kilos less than ten kilos kuchwa mo siling e chwang e yang fansein lo kuya tualu. The national road. The la ewa kona le masho le a beilueng hao wa ai long koring atoko mese ba achi ba kutoalo ba achi ba kutoalo kwa ba kono kutsena le kujo ba achi ba ba bereka kutoalo ba na kutoalo kwa ba kono kujo le di family zabone hayu kono kuba chake la kadi elections zidi hitiling kwa ba kadi local election kwa ba kono kwa kuvu da kala ba kala kore kima EFF. The most abone came at EFF. Haba ya who voted because Haba Konoka could say what go to a look for a good voting station. Ya no, Bakupa intervention, ya province, ya provincial horror, Eba two say, Bamoba Charum Bachwe, Reba Lucia, Aura Bua, while a lequeu. Kinana Luisore, Moton and Goody Plassing, Lona Multropo, Unti and House, what they are on like it, let's say. Diplasi tata kani so but shaba kuto shaba kuto fanseli diplasi diplasi ni mababi shaba kono kwa kuvu utaloro na self harina access ya kuto na kudiplasi nzo ora kudira doto doa uta na mukubwa na shaba yisi lukore EFF king utla mtarhe eni na shaba kama na malaratani ndoa urusuruhuna kuto malaratani ndoa ya no essence ba lisa salisi kumara kuni ani more especially e ya zolo ba kaiju kiko paki koko bedis thank you. No, thank you very much. Uh, the Commission of Election 2024. Just note, our people are not voting in that area, so there should be a program specific to address that. Thank you very much. The next hand. Number two. Thank you very much. Leaders, I am Fighter Daniel Bokwane Municipality Ward 10. Uh, I would like to add on the Commission of Governance as well as Political Education. 
uh, on governance first. Um, as we know, the EFF literally is the future to all of the people of South Africa. And what we have in South Africa currently is trade unions, of which COSATU is the third or the first largest union that we have with 21 affiliated unions to it. Um, we know that when it comes to assistance, whether being it of health, being it in the industrial sector, being it for the basically all of the workers, uh, from experience, I've seen that in the labor desk, the EFF literally assists every single person in South Africa, no matter where do you work. Um, what I would suggest is something that was suggested as well at the National Assembly, which is an establishment of a union, meaning to say we would assist the nurses, nurses not doing anything, we would be assisting these minors. Uh, it is very sad when you'd find that these unions only come to the aid of comrades when it is time to go on strike, when it is time to go for worker salary and the percentage boost. But how rarely is it that apart from a salary increase that workers get assisted? Uh, leaders are struggling at the Department of Labor People are struggling when it comes to CCMA. How many cases are they not, how many backlogs does it not just stretch out to? Those people resort to us as the EFF to go and assist them. Uh, secondly, to do that on governments, I, I've noted or it come to my attention to say that when we come to the Department of Agriculture, it, um, from people that I know, that I've heard, it's to find out that what these white farmers are doing now is that it's becoming difficult for them to access land. What you need to do now is people need to form consortiums so they can access land. So what they are doing is they are taking young black people. For as long as the farmer has a land, they take a young black person, they bring them together, they promise them the stars and the moon uh, to say that no, they use the young black person they write all your credentials and everything. They send you to the department with the connections that they have. They give them access to the land. But what happens is in that partnership agreement, nowhere do they get access to the benefits that is happening there. That is something that is currently happening in agriculture leaders. Um, old farmers, they take young black people. They move forward in that fashion. Secondly, on political education. It saddens me still to this very day to see that to come even to this very conference, we still have delegates. For you as the branch who are coming but then on what capacity are you voting for that leader so when we go back and speak about political education it becomes so vague but then we have to go back to those leaders as well do they have capacity in themselves as well to come and persuade me to say but then as a branch we are tasking you to go and vote now i challenge you as a leader right leader you want me to go and vote but then on the basis of what Am I going to just go and vote for you to go and emerge? And then when you're an RCT member or provincial member, what happens then? Uh, I think what we should establish just to add to that is the same way that we have Red Fridays. Political education should not just be where we teach comrades and leaders about phenomenism and all of those type of things. We should go down to the core of teaching people how to engage don't be afraid to apply your own mind. Don't you be afraid to challenge, respectfully, of course. I thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, the, uh, the third speaker. Uh, 
uh, greetings to the leadership, the newly uh, elected PCT. My, my name is Neona Musi from Hamahara. Mine is just going to be very short. Uh, governance, uh, as I was sitting, as you were presenting, I did not, I just hear, I heard you touching on gender based violence, but I did not hear a clear program how are we going to assist our people who, have, who are experiencing gender based violence, children abuse, and all those things. Uh, I think you, what you should have done, you should have at least given us something like uh, uh, we've got public representative. It's just uh, an example. There's public representatives. Because in most cases, when you fight, when you assist people who are being abused, they don't know where to go. This public representative must at least know all the social workers within their area. They must know all the police, women and men that are dealing with cases of gender-based violences. So that whenever you've got a case where people are being, uh, they are coming to you for, to ask for assistance, when you call your public reps, they can direct you to the relevant person. That's what I just wanted to say that when we're talking about, we are talking about gender-based violence, we're just talking, but we're not coming up with programs that are going to assist our people when they're being abused. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Uh, we have a desk called GPV desk. It's, it's responsible to deal with issues of gender-based violence. Uh, and it is, was led by the former provincial deputy secretary. I think she's still leading it until uh, the arrangement changes. But we do have that. If anyone wants to raise issues, she's, she's there for you to, to assist. Thanks, fighter. Uh, I think this one is governance. We can only what happens. Go or in a lagaki jerry the lake you hold a go ten has honyan. When I lay the building, they long for a ditting to have a car or go back to us. They long for a disantanity well. What does it have put so a northwest? Did he really? Dinali the tenants inside. Ma re di duela ma akantu nyaku ma hikeni. Building ye yan taki BNDC, which is now tend to be NWDC, Northwest District uh, Council. Building nyabu be di ki to the uh, uh, to the tribal office ya hatoto. If you ask the premises in they are saying they are paying NWDC, which is in Mafike. And the SD World Committees, we read those reports, how can the building in Northern Cape? But uh, had it really tenants, those tenants they pay in account to ya another province, which means our province e it a fella who are the building they were then Baba benefitang to the other province. So, you know, a problem, a guy who negative governance, a guy who is a business center. We have also who track over who sing your a matrobol. We wrote a letter to the mayor of the city. The mayor of the city was the one who was the one who was the one who was the one who the one who was 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 the and then we will be closing this uh, session and be able to bring finance committee to report and then open again for discussion and inputs on finance. Uh, you must remember when this session is gone, it's really gone. You cannot, when we deal with finance, then you bring another issues of governance and other commissions. Uh, if you are going to do that, we'll be here the whole day. 
and some of you have to travel very far. So let's just be as discreet as that. Uh, there's one hand here, Lida, uh, you'll be number one. And then the second hand, thank you very much. You, you, can, you can shoot and fight him. There is a place called Mountain View and Banks Drive. Mountain View and Banks Drive. Uh, in terms of the municipal demarcation, mm, uh, Mountain View and Banks Drift falls under Pogwani municipality. But in terms of the provincial boundary, it falls under Northwest. Which, at least, are the challenges, more especially how we are more in terms of service delivery. Because voting, they will be told, uh, your, your, your vote is your voice. But after voting, even that issue, Hore, no hello, we live more low, well, like Northwest. I think the leadership, it should be it like and because there were so many attempts uh, regarding the issue of Mountain View. Le le banks drift ko e le ngoring e e e tingeta word four ko 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 pamper start because even now as the EFF when we go there uh, in into that area ina challenge ko re loata as EFF but lutlo ko re nae because lingen na lutlo ko bua the very same thing say no ko ring ANC as a bua after the voters mano ko vota ha ko na happy ko re wellante. Services radio into into this area. So kio ane lamotla picho mwa ka au kwa leadership bo iteli di pele ene kiti bo tla ya la thoko ntwe wa kwa ria twenty twenty four kapa lo chanzi re bo ya kuba two raho bara ra ba ya kuvu tia la EFF kia le bo kwa mwe mbulastiro. Thank you very much. Yes, fighter there at the back. Thank you. I thank you, I thank you, Chair. Revolutionary greetings to all the fighters in the assembly. I just want to attach on the on the on the governance commission. My name is Pascal Ranti. I'm from Kakamas Keha Report 4. We have we have a problem there. We have farms, and those farms they are really, really, really exempting our our workers. I'm pleading to my leadership, my provincial leadership, because of there was uh, several time we. We put this matter. We have tried, but we haven't achieved what we have wanted. I can go back. I don't know whether leadership uh, Mervyn can recall while he was still be, uh, uh, our deputy chair in our region of ZFM. We had a problem whereby the land, we have in Ward 8. We have the problem with the, uh, what you call it, uh, these people, they, they are the sh shareholders. That case, it was not resolved. So I'm just asking to the elected, uh, current elected leadership, could you please guys just pick up the socks in terms of the land, uh, basically actually into the farms. My other plea is into uh, health uh, de 
department. We have a problem here in Northern Cape. The transport of the patients, we have been transported from Kakamas to Apinten Herisut with an ambulance. I don't know, maybe it's a good thing, but according to my knowledge, we have what we call a, a patient transport. We don't see that anymore. What happened? So how are we going to fix this thing? Until when? A, a, a past three or four months, I, I can't really recall, but it happened here in North Cape, whereby the Department of Health is running out of fuel, whereby the ambulance then can go transport our patients. How possible is that? Really, really, we are, we are deeply pleading to you. We have a problem. We have a problem, and then those problems, they must be attended. With hope, with this leadership that we have now elected into this uh, assembly. Please, help us. We have a reason why we have joined this movement. I thank you. Thank you very much, comrades. Uh, I hope governance uh, is noting and uh, the provincial GTU must uh, give directive with regard to that health discrepancy in Kai uh, Rip. Thank you very much. Comrades, uh, we will now call the finance committee. I uh, will be calling the rapporteur of finance committee, Faitani Tani. You don't want to see. Thank you very much. Without any waste of time, uh, Finance Committee. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, we were instructed to go back and go and fix our mistakes. So, uh, and, and thank you very much for being patient for us, Chair, and the leaders. Uh, as the Commission uh, resolutions, the finance committee. We we went back and clarified some other things. Then in the Northern Cape, this is our plan. Uh, the flea market. We are going to go by regions because we have five regions in Northern Cape. So each and every flea market that will be in that particular uh, region. We, we are going to sell food, uh, merchandise, uh, jewelry, and extra, and extra. Then the people who are responsible for that is the province. Then that is going to start from March, starting from next year. And it's going to continually, every month, it's not going to be a one-soft thing. Uh, so the PCT is the one who is going to be responsible for him. So the second one is the same one that I started, uh, the Gala Dina. Uh, the Gala Dina, we are going to start in this fashion. We are going to sell, to go to the PCT and the RCT members, leaving the councillors outside because already they have enough on their uh, table. So we are going to ask them to contribute, uh, each of them, 
because this is a collective thing. It's not only the treasurer thing. So as a collective, we are going to ask uh, the PCT and the RCT to collect, to, to, to give contribution to this gala dinner. So we are going, as the, as the finance, we are going to do the gala dinner. It will be next year, February, end of February, uh, that will be the gala dinner thing. Then the, the ticket, it's going to be 2,000 rand. So if the ticket is 2,000 rand, the communication will come out that how many people will you bring? Uh, that will be, I think, for, it's going to be for a couple. So from that one, we are going to spend a thousand rand from that 2,000 rand, which one person is for the ticket. Then the other thousand rand is going to go to the province. Is the one that you are going to take into the, into the, into the pocket. And we'll be having also, we are going to invite one of our national uh, leader. So we will be going out to, to business people that we know, uh, explaining to them, convincing them to come and join the, the gala dinner, to come and support us, the gala dinner, uh, going with the name of one of our national leader. So in this 2,000 rand, it means uh, the province is getting 1,000 rand, then the 1,000 rand will be using for the, organiz the, for the organizing, for us organizing the, the gala dinner. Then we have again, number three, the student accommodation. Student accommodation, we are going to go out looking for vacant, for uh, rooms that are vacant so that we must buy them. Uh, again, we'll be going out, we must be going out to convince uh, business people to come on board, uh, buying maybe uh, two or three, starting from buying two or three uh, student accommodation. Then as we are going to start uh, with two or three, then the other one will follow, they will come, uh, the other one will come uh, uh, like we are paying three, three accommodations for student accommodation then as we getting the, 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 the profit that profit is going to buy another accommodation up until we come where we want because uh, student accommodation it's a problem in Northern Cape and the people who are responsible for that is the region province and the branches they must come on board on that one and that is going to start February and it's an ongoing thing and the PCT as I said the PCT and the RCT PCT must come on board then number four it's uh, customized merchandise uh, buying merchandise and customize it for for commission. Uh, on the other one, we can say we are going to buy, we are going to do each and every branch, not each and every sub-region, uh, depending uh, how, how, how maybe if the time frame allows us, we will just see. Then we buy uh, sewing machines. We are going to buy sewing machines then we get uh, mothers. Yeah, we have mothers, uh, fighter mothers. We can we can sew. We can do the sewing. Then we do clothes, or we we, we do the, the 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 very same um, tablecloth. Then we sell them. We hire them. It will depend for what does the customer uh, want from us, and also that money. They will be making money, and the profit will be for for the treasurer for for, for, for the province also. And it's also an ongoing thing. We are also starting it from from next year, from March, because now we must go out and and do our research of how are we going to get all those things. And the the the, the car wash one, 
as I was saying that uh, the treasurer of the, 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 provincial, the provincial treasurer has uh, decided that he's going to give each and every region thousand rand to buy uh, equipment that they are going to to clean cars. And then and from there, if maybe like if I can say maybe um, to one car it's fifty rand. Then from that fifty rand, fighters will be working there. It's also uh, because of uh, people, our fighters are unemployed, so they will be working with commission. Maybe we can get at five rand out of the out of one car or ten rand, and the rest will be also in the saving. And the people who are going to be who are going to be responsible for that is the PCT, RCT, and BCT. And also, it's going to start next year, March, because we must get, we must come up with a plan. And recycling project, branches and region and province will also be on board. They are also responsible for that. And we are going to form groups to, to, uh, to, to do this recycling. And then we'll be giving reports to the branches, to, to, to the region. Each and every region will be getting reports how much a week did we get the recycling and how much was, 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 was made on that recycling. And the people who are also responsible for that is uh, the PCT, RCT, and BCT. Then we have the talent show. The talent show, we have Kids who are running around with talent, doing nothing. They are instead going to, 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 going to, to take alcohol and drugs. So we have decided that we are going, each and every sub-region, we are going to have talent show. We are going to take these boys who have talent show, who are doing pantola, the other ones, whatever the... the, the, the the talent that they're having will be using it on that day. So we are planning to do it also. It must also be an ongoing thing. Then we'll be doing, uh, we'll be, uh, we are going to, to, to take um, kids from the street, then giving them, giving them, uh, making tickets also for them. We are selling tickets and the parents, uh, families come and support. Uh, to come and watch the kids doing whatever that they will be doing on that day. It's also part of fun fundraising. And the people who is go, who are um, teams who are responsible also is the PCT and the RCT. That is be that is going to be also an ongoing thing. Then we have donation donation forms in each region. The region is going to do the donations for each and every sub-region. So, the donation forms will be taking out to the, to the, will be, uh, the region will be communicating with the sub-regions. Uh, we are expecting uh, each and every region to give back when the report comes back each and every month. Not every month actually. It's a, you know, it's a one-soft thing because it's part of it's part of, of contribution that is that is going to go into the pocket. So the donation, because a lot we already they have delivered too much, so we don't want to kill them. The region itself is going to give each and every, each and every region is going to give out two thousand rand. So they will just count the sub region that you are having, then you 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 multiply. Then you come up with 2,000 rand, then it's going to the treasurer. So, but here I see they say it's, it's, we, we have decided it's going to be an ongoing thing also. And the people who are responsible for it, it's PCT and the RCT. And the last one is this um, sewing. Yeah, I have said it. The sewing one uh, will be looking for our mothers. In the, in the branches. So we are going to make sure that each and every branch has a sewing machine so that we can start making money, uh, sewing whatever that we think is going to sell fast. 
and the donation forms and distribute to the provincial and regional treasure to distribute them according and they will be responsible for that. A sanitary towels manufacture is the last one. Uh, here in Northern Cape, the EFF in Northern Cape will be manufacturing safe and comfortable sanitary towels for all African women, January 2023. People who are responsible for it is the PCT. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Fighter Natani. Uh, comrades, I'm just going to take a few hands and then you make that contribution, that input, and then I hand over to the DSG to give us uh, the closing address. Oh, yes. Two hands, three hands. And just be quick you know, to save time. One, two, three, four. Thank you. Number one. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I'm Khalakha Wusi. What for? Khasakwanya Nasa Briji. I'm Chair. To add on that, I think Khore, Soka Tournament Zidi Dira Di Chalet Zidi Inz. So I think they should also lead John Abadi Zame. Thank you very much. Thank you. The scriber of the finance committee, please take note. You must uh, uh, absorb that. Yes, that's the mic. Thank you, Chair. More air talent show, more finance. Can I get to meet the from what 10 copogon? More air talent show. Kikina Halaki suggestion in Yanaka Sanyan. Kina Hana Hokan Nayang. Haka di 26th of July. Ka anniversary of the EFF. Rona S Province, Reverend Dira Laili, a 10 kilometers marathon racing, and a small one. Because when I was talking about the show, the talent is not going to be able to do it. When I was talking about the talent, it was not As now, the talent is not going to be able to do it. I said the period is hard. They were running comrade marathons. And both, all two of them, but really, Omongi number one, yeah, Northern Cape, Omongi number three, yeah, Northern Cape. So, Hokan Nayang on that day, Province organizing, yeah, and that 10 kilometers marathon run day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fighter Daniel, Pokwani Municipality Ward 10. Uh, on the issue of all of these, they're all very well and sound, but structuring should be something that we should be focusing on. Uh, it is good and well to suggest something, leaders, but then when we say we're going to have talent shows, uh, why can't we look at to say, let us go to all of these different small companies that are there. If we do not approach them, why don't we go through the labor decks that we have and have all these business management educations and we take our people, our forces, we educate them, we teach them with business plans, we set up seminars so that they themselves can go and start their businesses, right? Once they do all of that, we look at all of these sustainable ways and issues that we need within our province so that it can then come back to us and will assist us like that. Uh, on the second note um, to add is that South Africa and the Northern Cape contribute to 5.5% of pecan production that is both, that is exported outside of the country. We have to look at ways to say that what products can you do with pecan nuts? We have your oils, your butters, your facials, all of those things that can we do. Pecan nuts contribute to onconary and it helps with cancer and all of those type of things. Why can't we look further to say that, yes, we have all of these short-term goals. We look forward to our long-term goals and we say, why do we not have a factory in the Northern Cape that produces oil, that produces peanut butter, that produces butter? I thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, I believe this is the last hand. Oh, no, there is one more hand here. And then we'll be closing with the last hand from a PCT member. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, we have the last hand from uh, Fighter Mtualo. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, mine needs to maybe propose that the uh, fundraising committee also speaks of uh, enterprise development desk that must be established in the PCT and it will be set, uh, chaired by the portfolios who are going to be established and it's going to be taken to region so that we must help our entrepreneurs who are in the organization as we preach that we want economic freedom in our lifetime uh, to help them on onboardings and uh, enterprise development trainings that are available so that they must also be equipped and be able to plow back to the organization. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, comrades, uh, we want a strong, a very strong revolutionary hymn. And then we call upon uh, the DSG to do the closing remarks. We are done with commissions. Strong revolutionary song, a very strong one. Uh, yes, it does that. Oh, Alalayo, yes, it does that. Kiriba Holo Baron Abaile Bafo, yes, it does that. Alalayo, Alalayo, Kiri seta za tuba, seta za tuba, he seta za. Alalayo, alalayo. Come on, fighters. Kiri ba holo baruna ba ile ba fung, he seta za. Alalayo, alalayo. Manta, it's in your pique. Uh, I think I will lead this one. Uh, I'll close with it. I told you. Halala. You don't want to sing, so I'm singing the one that is comfortable. Kubi, 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 yes. Siya, ya. Siya, ya. No makubi siya ya siya ya no ma bese to bola besi ya ya besi bo pa no ma bese to bola besi ya ya Desi bo pa, no ma kubi kubi e, si ya ya, si ya ya, no ma kubi, si ya ya, si ya ya, no ma bese to. Bola, 
Sedobola, Esijaya, Esibopa, Auspetumalema, Auspetumalema, Auspetumonga Melisia, Nom, Auspetumalema, Auspetumalema. Amanda, Mata, Mata, Matimba, Matimba, Viva, EFF, 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 Viva, Viva, EFF, 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 Viva. Long live to our president and commander in chief, Julia Selomalema. Long live. Long live to our president and commander in chief, Julia Selomalema. Long live. Long live to our president and commander in chief, Julia Selomalema. Long live. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to send. Special greetings um, to the newly elected provincial command team led by the chairperson, Commissar Shadra Kaule, delegates from all the regions of the Northern Cape. We have come to the conclusion of this third provincial assembly, and we must appreciate your discipline over the past two days for remaining dedicated to the task of this assembly and representing your branches well. There was not a single drop of blood in this assembly. And that proves that you are servants of society who are interested in liberating our people and not fighting to death for positions of power. We are proud of you for diligently attending all commissions and contributing to the policy development of the EFF. We are proud of you for respecting your organization and contributing to the discussions. It is your discipline that will ensure that this organization lives long to liberate our people. I wish to remind you, comrades, of the words that the Commander-in-Chief said when he opened this assembly. The Commander-in-Chief educated us about the importance of discipline and democratic centralism, which dictates to us that resolutions of this assembly are binding. That is because the Provincial People's Assembly is the highest decision-making body in the province. And the resolution taken here are yours to defend as if they are your own, even if you disagreed. You must defend the resolution to confront the mining sector. You must defend and advance the recommitment to fight for the land and mineral wealth, and you must protect 
and defend the resolution taken on the question of leadership. This is your leadership for the next four years. And you must rally behind it unconditionally because unity of the EFF is the only way we will rescue our people from poverty. Comrade, I want to caution you that you must never be arrogant in victory. You must not leave this conference arrogant that you have defeated anyone because you cannot defeat anyone in the EFF. No one here is your enemy. You must never be too proud that you won. Because the EFF must always win at the end of an assembly, not individuals. We expect you to unite after this assembly because you are part of one organization and your only enemy is the wide monopoly capital. Your enemy is the lack of schools in Kuruman. Your enemy is the lack of hospitals in Katu. Your enemy is the lack of jobs in Pixley. Your enemy is gender-based violence. Your enemy, comrade, is the poverty of our people. So, you must live here energized to fight for our people and close this chapter of contestation. Comrade, the war towards 2024 has begun and we need all of you to begin appreciating the fact that we are practically a year away from what will be the most decisive elections in South Africa since 1994. And the Northern Cape must and will contribute meaningfully to the growth of the EFF. There is potential to do that here. Our people are hungry for the EFF. It is now our responsibility to take the EFF to them. It is our responsibility to make sure that this people's organization, the EFF becomes the people's organization to fight against gender-based violence and alcohol abuse. We must make this organization a fighting weapon for women who have lost hope, for children who seek peace in bottles of alcohol, for minors who risk their life to measure billions for white people by going underground. We must make the EFF a weapon of the poor in the Northern Cape. And that begins by building strong and dependable branches of the EFF. We want real branches. Branches that will win what? Branches that will build roads. Fight for service delivery. Fight for flushing toilets and fight for water. Commissars and writers, we must call on all of you here today to build a strong student command in the Northern Cape. The student command is important because it attracts the vibrant and intellectual youth, which is the future of this organization and this country. 
One of the first tasks to the newly elected PCT, Comrade Secretary, we must establish branches of the EFFSC and assist them in ensuring that they win their elections. We must build a strong student command that will fight for a meaningful place and leadership role in the minds of the Northern Cape. As a PCT, you must lead motions and legislations that will ensure that Sol Black University has an engineering and a mining faculty. And they must have a satellite campuses where the youth can go and learn how mining works. We must rescue the youth of this province from drugs and alcohol abuse. And the only way to do that is through education. Fellow fighters, we must, fight, we must fight for the land in this province. And not only useless land, but land where we can farm and land where there are minerals which can benefit our people. Your primary program now, as a mining province, it must be to aggressively fight for Cardinal Pillar number one, Cardinal Pillar number two of the EFF, which is the nationalizations of mine, banks, and other strategic sectors of the economy. This entire province is a strategic sector of the economy of South Africa. And only an EFF government will make sure our people benefit from the land, minerals of our ancestors. That is your first program, comrade. We want to wake up in the morning and see you on the news at the gates of Anglo-American. We want to wake up to see you on the news blocking all mining operations in the diamond mines, in the manganese mines, in the copper mines, in the iron ore mines across this province. The president made a clarion call that we must be the leftist allies of the miners in this province because they are the motive forces of our revolution here in the Northern Cape. Let us heed to that clarion. Let us honor the blood of Mtineni Mambushi Noki and the miners of Marikana. Let us carry the struggle of Marikana, which gave birth to this economic emancipation movement. The widows of Marikana, the women who sustained the strike on the copy in Marikana, are today fighting Cyril Ramaphosa for repatriation because they lost their sons, their brothers, their fathers, and their husbands. Let us carry the spear of selflessness, fearlessness here in the Northern Cape and fight for our land and our minerals. Long live to the undying spirit of Mama Winfred Matikizela Mandela. Long live. How we need Mandela. Mama Wom Sabala so how we ni mandela Mama Wom Sabala so how we ni mandela Mama we efe Sinete Bagumama Sinete Bagumama we to Sinete Bagumama Sinete Bagumama we to How Mama no Samo Mama we efe Oh, mama, no, Samo. Oh, mama, we, EFA. Manta.
Thank you very much, comrade. Uh, as we near the end of our uh, PPA, the next, uh, uh, let's welcome the um, closing remark by the DSG. Uh, we really are inspired. Uh, comrades, uh, the next uh, commissar to come and speak is the newly elected provincial secretary to come and do as uh, the declaration of the people uh, of the people's assembly commissar z quinai Viva EFF, viva! Viva! Viva EFF, viva! Viva! Iabangena, EFF, Iabangena! Oza, 2024, Oza! Oza! Viva, CIC, viva! Viva! Uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Chair. Uh, firstly, let me greet all the delegates, commissars amongst our MIF. PCT, uh, an invited guest, uh, giving this responsibility as my first task as a provincial uh, secretary elected yesterday <laughs> to read declarations of the conference that took place the 30th up until today. We, the delegates across the length and breadth of the Northern Cape province, representing economic freedom fighters, branches, townships, informal settlements, workplace, campuses, gathered here at Tabumoforosi Multipurpose Center, Motibistat. The delegates for this PPA are drawn from 211 del uh, branches five RCTs and the PCT in the Northern Cape. We gathered here to deliberate and engage and produce strategic for, strategies for the, de, for the advancement of our people lives. To further develop and grow the organization and to realize economic freedom in our lifetime. The total liberation of our African and black in particular has become a center of both of our discussion and action as the organization. It is this third provincial people's assembly that must ensure that the fundamental policy in a manner that is guided by the seven non-negotiable pillars of our EFF fighters. All delegates who have gathered here over the three past uh, days had a very difficult yet a simple task in ensuring that the realization of our mandate from the constitutional structures of the EFF, amongst other things, the assembly noted the current political balances of forces, both domestically and internationally. The assembly noted that ongoing appealing living condition of our people, the rise of the unemployment, the entrenched corruption and maladministration as well as the thuggery and the holy, hooliganism in the Northern Cape government under the stewardship and the administration of the former liberation movement that is led by the few old individuals who determined to milk all state resources and collapse anything and everything is seek to resort or to restore the dignity of a black child. We were encouraged by the efforts and the successes of economic freedom fighters to bring back the land question to the public discourse as attempts at the re resolving the land question through technocratic ne neoliberal methods since 1994 have failed. We resolved that the PCT must intensify the work geared towards the am amendment of the section 25 of the constitution. Amendment must emphasize the abolishment of private ownership of the land 
transfer of the land as the whole to the people and that the state must hold this land in custody on behalf of the poor masses of our people. Fighters, the third provincial People's Assembly was determined to develop radical inclusive policies. Amongst, we declare that all EFF uh, public representatives must identify, visit all unfinished projects in their municipalities. All EFF public representatives must submit motions, statements, and questions to executive every week. All public representatives must convene monthly community meeting in their wards of deployments. All EFF representatives must submit comprehensive report on the work that they have done at their adopted schools, early learning centers, clinics, their wards of deployment and the last, on the last Friday of every month. Fighters, Northern Cape remains one of the provinces that is rich in minerals resources, yet materially poor. The majority of our people remain homeless, landless in their province of birth. While the majority of land remains in the hands of the white minority, the lack of political will and the absenteeism of government has indeed paralyzed the livelihood of our people and destroyed the little hope that our people had in, our, in the better future. Fighters, the third provincial uh, people's assembly further declare that all wards will reach their one million members target for uh, before the end of November 2022. All structures of the EFF in the province will undergo intensive political induction as follow. PCT, RCT, at the end of November 2022. PCT before the end of November 2022. All public representatives, the staff of the EFF should have registered with different institutions by the end of November 2022 to pursue their studies. The province will host political curriculum and short courses every quarterly in each region. The province will march to mines pro provincially and locally as protest of protest movement. All PCT committee will be established and must submit monthly reports to the PCT. All fighters should participate in SGBs, clinics, committees, and what committees. This was maximum participation by all delegates, and we resolved on the further issues on 2024, nationally, provincially, media and communication, finance, fundraising, governance and political education, basic education and early childhood and health, and we will communicate all these resolutions to media platform, platforms. We will go and ensure implementation of these third PPA resolution. We are a generation of economical freedom in our lifetime, and we shall overcome. Amen. Uh, thank you very much, Nobala. Uh, that was Commissar Z. Vinana. Uh, comrades, now we are going to the last point on our program, and uh, that will be the acceptance and closing address uh, by the newly elected provincial chair, uh, Commissar Lapolohang Shedrek. Taule, Commissar. Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. Oh, 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 oh,
Bara kaya bani kimo narata di kuba mono juice ang kaya galata jata na kapata tasa chalo. Kira kimo chaga chau la i chau la le. Luka ko na ako chau pa la la IFF ko ta ko na sabat ko mo la le jo INC. Musiba na ako chau la kira ra ko asa la le ma ko chirong ko ako mo chau la tata isko na ka ko ngao kasi ba duwa kau. Oh na mani la chalo. Bara kimo musiba na sa ta so ko le aro ko hamara iwa ko la le ru. Kira ta fa ta rin sa mo mo ko be. Kira hagi ka chana tu ya ka se ta ta so le tlo ta ta na se ba ta na ma ta ta. We nka be kimo ka tsa pula bru ka kimo be mo sa to ko. Kira kira ma khare ba ma khare aye fa nka se ba ka mo ra ko lo ka na lo sa ra ba lo me ne ja ha. Ta ka bo ko sa bonga na sa pa ila ka to. Mo tha ka chau le. Ko so ko sa ba ko sa. Muta chuka na pazu, ita galete, musima ro amuko. Uka chua kile koko, na na le mai kera bero, ba muta ga puto abu mbwa sadi, liba na uto abani changu mukwa ya INC. Bara ba na busa ma, busa ma solo, haba uto kuma kwa mali na bara, baruma ba tata bulu kwa kalo cha. Hatiri alati bwa chesa ba, kubu gati na yo. Kahwa ya tibari, kusupa na kamera kwa sokola chana. Fighters, fever, fever. Amanda, Amanda. I hold EFF. I hold I hold EFF Northern Cape. I hold Tata Julius Solo Malema. Tata. Tata Julius C I C Solo Malema. Tata. Oza 2024. Oza. Oza 2024. Oza. Amanda. Amanda, thank you very much, comrades. What a surprise. Thank you. Comrades, let me take this opportunity on behalf of the membership of the Economic Freedom Fighters, the branches of our greatest movement in South Africa, the organization that only has responsibility to build and rescue our people from poverty. But in closing this gathering, comrades, let me take our appreciation as a collective to the collective led by the Deputy Secretary General, Popi Raisive Malola. <laughs> we are saying thank you to you that the organization resolved to deploy you to the Northern Cape, knowing exactly your capacity and intention to build the EFF in South Africa. And we are saying, because of your guidance and support, we are going to build the EFF in this province under your leadership. <laughs> but also, comrades, in doing so, we must at, at all times appreciate the deployees to this province, led by Commissar Paul Nittamare. You were deployed to the Northern Cape to come and make sure that we grow the organization. You did not only grow the organization, but you became a mother to all of us. You became a leader that many of us must long for if you are not amongst ourselves. And we are saying to you, the role of being a mother is not only a role that you must play at home. You have proved to us that that role you can play in building the EFF. And that's what exactly you have been doing. And we believe that with that collective and your leadership will continue to grow the organization in the Northern Cape. Our youthful commissar, our youthful commissar, Sharon Letlape, we are saying your dedication to this province has made many young people to realize that for you to be a leader, it's not about age, it is about commitment. And your commitment has proved and is continuing to prove that indeed, young people have the very beautiful future under the leadership of the EFF, and you are a living example. 
Comrades, it is mostly important that all of us gathered here, we are not going to tell ourselves that we are closing a conference. In fact, we are starting a journey towards the future as a collective. <laughs> Fighters, we are on our last day of the PPA. I must admit that this was not easy because of all of us had to prepare and make sure that the venue is ready. We did not get any service provider. We did it amongst ourselves. We prepared food for ourselves. We did everything, including cleaning this hall, because of we are sure that ours is a future of those who are prepared to work the ground. We have demonstrated by making sure that we have demonstrated by making sure that where we are seated every day in the morning it is clean, not clean by the staff of this institution, but by our own revolutionary fighters of the economic freedom fighters. So you must applaud yourself for that dedication. The EFF is the only hope in the hands of the dejected masses, the homelessness, the poor, both in the urban and rural areas, informal settlement dwellers, and the marginalized people of our community. This is our organization. And as the EFF members, we have an obligation to make sure that the generational mission of the economic freedom fighters in South Africa, especially in the Northern Cape, in all five regions, is to make sure that your neighbor, your friend, your sister, appreciate who we are, because of the EFF is not here to play, but we are here to stay and make sure that we change the lives of our people. That's who we are sitting here today. Fighters, we must commend all of you for working hard the ground, for working the ground, forces of the EFF, recruiting membership towards one million, one million membership campaign drive. That is a campaign that we must not only do on Friday. It's a campaign that we must continue to do on a daily basis. Why is it a campaign that we must do on a daily basis? It is because on that program of recruitment, you are able to identify the challenges facing our parents at home. You will not do it successfully if you want to do it on Friday, sitting in a corner in your, in your community, in the malls. Let's go to our people, because of that's where we'll identify the reason of why should we recruit the majority of South Africans to join the economic freedom fighters in South Africa. So far, comrades, only in John Taolo we have realized that the leadership has taken the baton from the leadership that led before. And they are continuing. And as they are doing this, comrades, they were doing it and they are doing it remembering Ulebohen Khaubudiwi, who was the deputy chairperson of the region in this organization. And I believe wherever Ulebohen is, he's very happy that he did not leave behind useless leaders of the EFF, but he has left behind those who are committed to build the economic freedom fighters in South Africa. So comrades, we are grateful. We are fortunate. That Kokosara, the mother of Mewaha President Yaruna Julia Silomalema, was able to give South Africa a gift. That gift we must protect at all costs. That gift is a gift for Africans, not only South Africans. It's a gift that in all corners of South Africa we must defend. Why must we defend it? We must defend it because of if that gift will be taken away from us, this future will be doomed. The expectation of our parents at home will not be realized. And for that, comrades, I'm, I'm calling upon all of us as members of the EFF that when we go home to bed, to, to our houses, when we go to bed, let's pray for our CIC. Let's pray that those white monopoly capitals in South Africa will never get it right in destroying the gift it is our responsibility.
in making sure that we defend that. And we defend it because of that gift carries our interest as the people of this country. And for no second must we withdraw the engagement that we have shown since the establishment of the Economic Freedom Parties. Comrades, the leadership of the EFF national and provincial, we must unite. We must unite at all cost. And why must we unite? We must unite because of the enemy is looking at us. The enemy, every time when they hear that the EFF is coming together, they know that those ones are not going to a tavern. Those ones are not going to a holiday. But they are going to make sure that they are planning a path of our next generation. We are not planning for us, but we are planning for the next generation. So if we are not united, if commissars and fighters will not work together, but will look at any opportunity to destroy each other, then we must know that you are not in a right organization. You don't love this organization. Irrespective of where you are sitting, in terms of position of leadership, you must know that our responsibility is to build. We must be a friend to each other. We must guide each other because of our task is very big and it might be very big for many of us sitting here. So the little resource that we are having, let's tap in on it and use it wisely. It is a request that we are putting to all of us. And for that, comrades, comrades who contested the, com the, 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 the PPA did not contest against this leadership. They contested the conference of the EFF, the PPA. And all of us have emerged as a collective. There's no winner here. And there will never be a winner here. We are not going to allow it as this collective. We have emerged as a collective. We must go and confront those who wish us bad. Our commitment as we are honoring our appointment with the future is that is a task ahead a key and is a task ahead us. We have the responsibility to deliver economic freedom in our lifetime. And therefore, therefore it starts now and it starts with all of us. As in when we are going back, we must go back and report to our parents. We must go back and report to our neighbors, our sons and daughters, that I went away for a weekend. But where I went, I went there to restore and secure your future as my family because of I love you the most. As you arrive at home, our families, our friends, they must say a leader has arrived. We must visit this family so that at least he or she must tell us where we were for the whole three days. They have told us that we must love one another and build each other in order to grow this organization called the EFF. Comrades, as we walk the streets of South Africa, on your right hand side, on your left hand side, when you look, you must see a red beret. Because of a red beret next to you, it represents exactly what we are fighting for. And that is economic freedom in our lifetime. <laughs> Comrades, we were blessed on Friday. It was not a coincidence that our PPA started on Friday. It is a decision taken in 2019, in 2021, in 2020, in 2022, that we are going to grow the EFF. And hence we decided that one million membership should be driven through a program called a year of branches. And Red Friday on Friday was our Red Friday because of we are together in one home. And on top of that, we were blessed by the CIC of this organization, the president himself. And because of that presence of the CIC amongst ourselves, TSG, I think other provinces would ask the same, that uh, opening a conference is like a blessing. Your presence where ufitilenteng, kosala kuna le matlokonolo kumurako. And Matlokonole is what we have done. 
by holding a very disciplined PPA. And for that, DSG, we are saying thank you to the CIC. Comrades, constructive criticism and self-criticism must be allowed at all times. If you are a leader and you don't want to be told that you are wrong, then you are in a very wrong place. Go and look for another place, not the EFF. Because of here we must criticize each other. Here we must advise each other. Here we must take a decision as a collective. We must be selfless and loyal to the generational mission of the economic freedom in our lifetime. And the only organization we have as a weapon to change the status quo and living condition of the masses who sees us as the last hope in Africa, not only in South Africa. The PPA, the PPA has highlighted issues sharply, raised issues that must prioritize challenges that are confronting our organization and communities. We are a few months away from the 2024 national and provincial election. This presents us with a lifetime opportunity to change things around the Northern Cape. It is a time for us to take the Northern Cape government, and we are taking it because of we are ready. We are ready. Not that we are ready of the former liberation when they took the government and come and embarrass black people that what the cleric and them said become, became the truth, that black people cannot lead. The EFF must come and change that. In 2024, when we take over under the leadership of President Julius Silo Malema, those who are against the idea of a black child must say, indeed, this gift is not just a child's gift. It's a gift from our great-grandparents and our ancestors. All, all our public re representatives at Parliament, the provincial legislature, the district municipalities, including myself, we must ask ourselves when we prepare in the morning, go into council to take the resolution, the resolutions of councils, to adopt the agenda. Why are we doing that? Are we doing it in our best interest as individuals or we are doing it because of we need to serve society? Some of us, when we wake up going to councils, we are just going there because of shame. You are deployed, and you take it as an employment. The organization deploys you, you turn it and make an employment. Public reps, we are not employed. We are deployed. At any time, you can be removed. And the only time you can prove to the EFF that you are ready to lead is when you are recalled, you don't make noise. You accept the invitation because of it is an instruction from the leadership. We have in many occasions spoke about the scourge of gender-based violence against women and children. Comrades, it is time that we must translate the resolution of the PPA into a practical, implement, implementable, and clear program to fight this demon. And that demon must be destroyed, and it can be destroyed by us now. You have said during commissions, during plenary, that we spoke less as if we were afraid about GBV in the Northern Cape. And I want to agree with the fighter who said that. You are correct. Why am I correct, comrades? It is because... The premier of the Northern Cape, Zaman Isol, does not take GBV serious. The premier is not taking the GBV issues or matters serious in the Northern Cape. The example to that was one, a, when a young woman in the Northern Cape went out, out of frustration, seeking help from the provincial government, the NGOs, the police or everyone, law, law enforcement, none of us did anything. None of us did anything. Instead, that became a public issue. A responsible leader, comrades. If a young person says that you did funny things to me when I was at school at the age of 16 and you are so proud today, 
when I'm raising it, you think that I'm making a joke to a point where that you must threaten my life, you must threaten my employment, and no one must speak against you. Law enforcement, because of they are in a payroll of the ANC-led government, they did nothing, including the women's league. Those women, they don't love their kids. Those women, they are embarrassment. A young lady is crying out to say, I need you to help me. The NGOs, the MEC of social development, none of them did anything. Instead, because of they are afraid for this possible rapist, they speak to him through corners. If you are not a possible rapist, as a premier of the Northern Cape, come out and clear your name so that we must not have a stigma of suspecting you. <laughs> Up until you clear this, we will treat you as a rapist. And if you have a problem with us, take us to court so that we must challenge you in court. Women are raped in the Northern Cape. Women are killed in the Northern Cape as a premier. You use this young lady's problem as something that you must be proud of. But let me tell you, women are also failing us. You can't be a wife of Shadrach Kaule. And I know what, you know what your husband is doing. People are making a noise. You don't come out and say, but clear the name of the family. If you don't want to clear your name, but look at this ones are my kids. I need to protect their dignity. And you don't do anything. And yet you want to claim the first lady position in the Northern Cape. We don't have respect for you. We don't have respect for you. The ANC and the premiers are money soul. Take us to court. Fight us if we are speaking nonsense. Fight us and make sure that we are coming back to you and apologize. But up until you clear your name, you are a monster. You are a monster. <laughs> Comrades in the Northern Cape, we have minds here. But when we are in accidents, we are taken to Kimberley. As if there's anything better in Kimberley. There's nothing better in that hospital. In fact, they must even change the name of uh, uh, Honorable Robukwe to something else. Maybe they must call it Zamani Hospital. They must not use the names of those who fought for the liberation of this country to undermine the dignity of a black child. We have mines here. More than 30 mines just in Kurumane alone. But DSG, there's not even a hospital here. That when, when we look at it, we will feel at home. Pregnant women are waiting for more than two months to see a gynecologist. Because of in the province, we have few. Only those who are employed by the state can afford this because of they have medical aid. They have medical aid and they can go to Johannesburg where all those facilities are found. What about us here? What about us in the Northern Cape Kuruman? What about us in Pixley? What about us in Namakwa? Where must we go when we are troubled? Kalahadi Mine leaves the Northern Cape here and go to Johannesburg and build a hospital. Their workers don't have medical aid. They don't have a hospital and they go and build such an expensive facilities in Johannesburg. And when we speak against that, we are told that we are wrong. We should never raise that issues. Comrades, it is time now that we stand up and confront Kumba, Anglo-American. Why should we confront them? Is because of they lied to us. We had meetings with this institution. They told us that what we are saying is not true. As I'm standing here, I'm sitting with a proof that they have misled us and they have been lying to us. So from time to time, comrades, we must make it our responsibility that we will visit Anglo-American as in when we want. 
If you want to visit them tomorrow in the morning, we don't need to make an appointment. We have made an appointment with them through the CIC and the EFF national leadership. That appointment ended on that day. From now on, as in when we wake up and feel like closing Kumba, we are going to do so. We are going to close those mines in the Northern Cape because of we are fighting for the betterment of our people. We want to see the life of a black child in Kurumani changing. We are sick and tired to be apologetic, especially the residents of the Northern Cape. Let's change the status quo. If we are to be arrested, let it be. We join this thing knowingly that there are consequences. So those consequences, if it will be consequences for fighting for our people, let's do it. The DMR gives young people a mining, a mining a, a right here. The mines, South 32 says to them, you cannot mine here because of you found us here. And these young people must not speak about it. And even when they go to the provincial government, local leaders and regional leaders, no one is helping them. The EFF is the last hope, comrade. We are the last hope for the people of South Africa. Comrades, allow me to congratulate the newly elected leadership. You are the best. You are the best not because of you are elected. You are the best because of you have been on the ground building the membership of the EFF in the Northern Cape. And that membership that we have built, when it was announced in KZN 2022 January by the CIC that end of December we will be having one million membership, some towns thought that we are playing. He said it himself, the president. Giraffe view. And that giraffe view is going to be realized in 2024. So the collective we are sitting with here, we have an appointment with the future. We will not win 2024 if we are having 50,000 membership. Let's stop gatekeeping. Let's stop gatekeeping. This thing is taller and you can't do anything. It's nonsense and it must come to an end. If you are saying Sinitola Allah and you can't, you can't lead us, why did you recruit those comrades? Why did you recruit them? You recruited them because of you wanted them to be flowers in this organization. No. We are going to recruit. I'm telling you, comrades, those who have a problem must say it now. We are going to recruit comrades. We are going to destabilize this thing called the ANC. We must collapse the DA. Because of DA thing that they have a right to be voted for by colored communities. And that's nonsense. Colored communities is not for the DA. They are the people of the Northern Cape. And we are going to work with them hand in hand. Every time, comrades, we go to those regions, we are going to be seen amongst colored communities. So only if we will stop the gatekeeping will we be in a better position to grow the EFF in the Northern Cape. I have seen during campaign, many of us comrades wrote bad about members of our own organization, the EFF. And many of us spoke bad about them. To a point where they say, we don't think you have ever voted for the EFF. Our membership has been at 27,000. It's at 27,000 as we speak. But we got 52,000 during 2021 local government election. Where do we get that 21,000? 21, we get it from people who appreciate you and not, not those ones who want to make noise and be seen to be loving the EFF yet they are pretending to love the EFF. So, let's not insult each other. Let's not insult our people. Let's go and speak to everyone. Let's go and identify proper people in society to join the EFF. I can tell you, 
Many of them are coming. And where they are, they are leaders. Where they are, they are leaders. Are you saying we must not recruit such skill, such experience, and come and clean it here if you feel that it's too dirty for it to lead us? The only time we will grow this organization is when, after the elections in the Northern Cape Provincial Government, with this collective, the ANC and the DA, they must come to the EFF and ask for positions of deployment. Not us going to them. And as they do so, we must go to the furthest part of the province where there's no service delivery and say, if you want a meeting with us, we are in Rechtersfeld, in Kubus. Come and meet us here. We cannot be available to lead the EFF if we are not prepared to sleep in a car. If you are that fortunate, if you want to lead this organization, you must be prepared to sleep at a garage, at a filling station. You must be prepared to take a lift on a truck, in a truck. And once you do that, you will appreciate challenges facing our people. DSG, sitting here, we have the owners of the Economic Freedom Fighters. We have members of the EFF. Some of you, for the first time, you attend a PPA. And don't disappear from here. The attendance register we are having is going to help us to track your participation in the organization. We are not going to leave you. We are high. We are hoteling. And then it ends there. We, we love our money in the EFF. We are going to follow our money. So rest assured, all of you sitting here, we are going to follow you. And if anyone asks, why do you love money? You must tell that person it's because of we want our people to live a better life. So when you speak about money, even if we were sleeping, we wake up. Because of that's the future that the minority in South Africa don't want us to speak about. Comrades, we are happy that today we had a successful PPA. We are closing it with great respect. All other PPAs, DSG, in the country, they must learn the same way we have learned from the Northwest and Mpumalang and Gauteng how to handle a successful PPA. We must also motivate other provinces moving forward because in doing so, the enemies will appreciate and respect the EFF in South Africa. I'm grateful, comrades, as an individual. As I'm closing this, comrades, I want to personally thank my son, Repeat. He's a pillar in my life. I don't have a partner. My son is a partner. My son takes care of everything in my absence. And when he does this, he also encourages me that don't lose hope. You have managed to keep the family together. It is now my turn to play the role that you have played. Go out and serve the people of the Northern Cape. In your absence, I'm here. So that young man, even if someone likes it or not, it is my responsibility that his success and the success of his siblings will lead them to a better future. And I'm saying this because of many of us are supported differently by our families. You might be supported by your wife. Others are supported by their mothers, their brothers and uncles. And when life changes, don't forget them. Because a family is everything. And family is everything in a different form. In a form that when you look at it, sometimes you'll ask yourself, how did I do it? 
My entire life I have been in politics. And my kids are well mannered. My kids are everything I'm proud of. And it is because of your prayers. It is because of when I drive throughout the night, you pray for the liberation of people of South Africa and Africa. In between or indirectly, you are praying for us to do very good. Bramos, you have been a pillar in my life. You have been everything that today one can look at me and say, Shadrach as an individual is doing good. But you have been there quietly. When I'm troubled, you always rise and say, you will make it. Remain focused, Shadrach. And today, we see the EFF growing. And I'm saying to you, comrades, everyone at home, appreciate those who are supporting you. Love your families. Even when you don't spend time with them, but they must know, Kore, you are the pillar in the family. I buried my sister yesterday. I was not there. I was here. And I never bothered to tell anyone. Kore, I lost my sister. Because of I knew the task ahead of me is not for me as an individual, but it's for us as the people of South Africa. Because of want your change to your life to be changed. As you live here, comrades, don't underestimate the power in your hand. Don't look down at you, at yourself, because of you come from a shake. Don't look down at yourself and say, Kuhaye, we are very poor. Therefore, I cannot compete with the world. You don't need materials to grow and become a leader. We just need your behavior, commitment, and dedication. Thank you very much. Lento 